Well, I'm going to try this again, folks. Hello again. <laughs> oh, isn't this fun? I'm so glad that those of you are here are still here. Starting a little bit late, so sorry. Still talking about, oh yeah, it's me, Marianne Kilkenny. So glad you're here. I hope you all waited for me. You know, it was one of those technical things again, but that's okay. We're learning. We're learning. Hope you're here, Judy. I hope you didn't, I didn't lose you anyway. So back to what I was talking about when I was so rudely interrupted. I'm talking today with you about, hmm, well, you know, it's that time of year when I could be talking about holidays and probably I'll talk a little bit about that too. Yeah, so, while I get a little organized here, I'm going to remind you it's Mary Ann Kilkenny, Women Living in Community. This is about community and rituals. And as I said, it's that time of year when we start thinking about the holidays. And what, what our background might be is always, 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 always different. The importance of gathering with others that we really haven't had an opportunity to do a lot of in the last long time, really long time. So I'm going to ask you for a little bit of help on this one, more than just hanging in here with me, which I really appreciate. And that is... Tell me about your experiences too, you know? Um, we're gonna work on this together or play with it a little bit, probably. So gatherings, rituals, food, food. One of the things I, I sort of posted was about breaking bread. And one of the things when I, when I looked at that, I sort of Googled it and said, breaking bread, what is that? And I found out that it's, you know, probably very oriented in the Christian uh, world and how the colloquial phrases can be attached to things that are basically pretty surprising. Not really that surprising. And the thing I think is funny about the whole breaking bread thing is that, uh, you know, now that everybody's gl gluten intolerant, who, who eats bread? <laughs> Hey, Ju hey, Judy, I'm glad you hung in here with me. Glad you're back. Glad I'm back. <clears throat> so we're talking about um, eating, gathering, rituals. And since it's that time of year as we go into the holidays right now, you now we're talking about gatherings. It could be a Thanksgiving gathering. It could be a Christmas gathering gathering. It could be Hanukkah. It could be all the other holidays that we have coming up. Or the holidays that maybe you have traditions about in your family with your friends. And I'm going to touch a little bit more on those as well. And the things that we actually do when we are together. And looking at this, I thought about the things that influence our gatherings, our rituals, and our traditions. It's oftentimes, it's probably who you grew up with, whether it's your, your it's probably a family, relatives, whomever you spent your early life with, really I think does influence what we do. Some of the memories that I have of that, I'd love to hear some of your memories as, as well. But it's family, culture, background, where you grew up, what part of the world, part of, you know, you, you grew up in, maybe what, what religion you are, what that you were brought up in and probably still are in some cases. And the things that we have missed as far as gatherings in the last few years, I think really, really highlights the importance of sitting down, eating together, being together, and, and the, the importance of that. So, um, I'm also thinking about the things that I grew up with and are still with me as an adult as things that are really important to me as I go into being with other people. 
So Judy, what ones do you, might you have or anybody else that might be out there? While I wait for y'all, I might have to bore you with the ones that I have. So um, Christmas Eve, I have a not a large family, but as people got married and had children and all that kind of thing, um, <laughs> we always played. We always played uh, charades. Well, you can imagine, I dragged some poor guy. Hey, Catherine Louise, hello. Welcome, welcome, glad you're here. And that is, I bring this poor guy home with me and we immediately ask him to play charades. Well, that was a true test of if someone is gonna move, is gonna be part of my family. I mean, right off the bat. Okay, get up there and perform. <laughs> Most of them were okay. The other part of me being divorced has nothing to do with charades. But I love I love playing charades. I have a very expressive family. And you might notice I have a very expressive being. I have a very expressive face. So, um, and Judy's saying the importance of dialogue and the importance of it and how, how memorable it can be. Sure. And um, the other thing that my family does, I don't know if any of you do this, but we, uh, I think it's usually on Christmas Eve, I haven't been home in a while, and that is we have a white elephant gift exchange. How many of you know out there what a white elephant gift exchange is? Just say yes, make a heart, thumbs up, do something. Well, <clears throat> I had somebody ask me this the other day. You know, it's one of those things when you grow up, you think everybody knows what a white elephant gift exchange is. <laughs> a white elephant gift exchange is when you have something in your house laying around that you want to get rid of. Hey, Sonia, welcome. So, not Sonia that I want to get rid of, but uh, the white elephant gift exchange. Yes, and that is you bring it, you, no, you wrap it up and you bring it and you put it in a pile with the other ones. Everybody grabs a number or a card and you start opening the gifts in the order. One gets to open the first one. Then they get to select a gift from the pile or they get to take and steal the gift that was already opened. Well, there's lots of different ways to do this, but the plan is that you end up with something at the end, maybe that you had to trade with somebody and there's a little bit of strategy involved in this. So, and you leave with probably something totally you didn't want, but it was, you know, the old, another person's trash is another person's treasure. So the white elephant gift exchange I'm giving to you, I did it, at, and, and that part about bringing these things through us as adults. Uh, I, when I was at the, the shared house that I lived in and the neighborhood uh, that I lived in a while back, we did, we invited the neighbors in for a white elephant gift exchange. I have to tell you, a lot of people didn't get, it was something that, that you didn't want, and that was weird or something. And we'd open them up and they'd say, oh, th thank you. Uh, and you weren't sure if you thought this was a good thing or something they wanted to get rid of. So you have to be a little bit clear when you make invitations on that kind of thing. Okay, anybody else want to weigh in on what kinds of things they do on during the holidays? Yeah, during the holidays or at gatherings. As I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be during the holidays. <sighs> Let's see. Well, when I moved to North Carolina, I am quite a distance from California, uh, from North Carolina. It's like different sides of the United States. And I wanted to bring some uh, traditions with me and that one I brought the white elephant gift exchange thank you Catherine Louise 
I like going live. I'm glad there's a, people out there to hear me, to see me. Uh, and one of the things I had done a ways back, almost every year, was a vision board. And a vision board uh, I did quite often. And it's in the old days, I mean, people do them on Pinterest now, but I st I'm still a, a purist when it comes to the vision boards. It's cutting things out of the magazines that, that sort of you're drawn to. And some people do it based on a theme. Some people do it based on other things. Some people just do it intuitively. And then looking at it, I, I have done it for years. I didn't do it the last couple of years, of course. But that it was to have a group of people invited over for to do vision boards on New Year's Day. Yeah, on New Year's Day. To set the intention, there's a new year coming, and we wanted to get together to do that. So, Elaine Adams, thank you for being here. Um, gift, oh, you're doing a gift exchange tomorrow. And... It's called a Yankee Swap when I lived in Virginia. Thank you for sharing that, Elaine. Yeah. <laughs> called different things. Yes, absolutely. The and I, I also did a vision board years ago, you know, and you might have noticed that community is really important to me. And what happened was we did these vision boards and there was, you know, five or six of us sitting around and I, at the end of it, I've done them by myself and I've done them together with other people. And in this particular case, I, they said, okay, let's everybody show theirs. And I have to tell you, I was like, had a little bit of anxiety about showing mine because I'm not the most artistic person on the face of the earth and everybody was pretty, pretty serious about it. And so what I did, you know, I showed mine and I said, this is the community, blah, 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 blah. And, and one, one person was brave enough to say to me, Marianne, uh, um, it's really pretty, all those scenes that you have of community, but there aren't any people in any of the pictures. It's one of those aha moments that sticks with you. And that was, oh, maybe that's why this is not materializing. There's no people. So a couple of ideas for you, hopefully that will help you at some gatherings. I, I, I brought these things with me and I lo love sharing them with you. Let's move on to food. Food as far as what kinds of things when you were brought up, were things that were definitely part of your family, your tradition. Anybody have things that they'd like, they'd say are, you know, really reminiscent of their particular family? Okay, well in that case, I'll wait till you guys respond, and that is, so in my family, growing up, there was always a green jello molded salad at, over the holidays. And it had, I think it had cottage cheese, green jello, and it always had the maraschino ch cherries on it. And there almost always was a big deal about the fact that probably the jello salad hadn't set up. Any of you used to jello and it's setting up or not? Talk about. <laughs> Talk about aging myself. Do people still eat jello other than in the hospital? I don't know. Ah, Judy's saying her one of the things that traditions is pecan pie. And I probably am saying that not the southern way. Pecan pie? <laughs> ah, yes. And Sonia's saying homemade cookies for gifts to our na to our neighbors. Wow. Mm, yum. 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 Great tradition. And then this is a perfect community, getting to know your neighbors, already knowing your neighbors. Somebody shows up at the door with a plate of cookies. Hey, they're, they're in my, my, uh, my neighbor book, definitely. Elaine says sweet potato casserole. So Elaine, does your sweet potato casserole have marshmallows on the top? 
My mouth is watering. Oh dear. <laughs> what about a tradition as far as uh, <laughs> Sonia saying, I really like green jello salad. Hmm. Well, you have to come to, to my house in California sometime. I think somebody probably still makes it. And uh, where was I? I lost my place. Oh yeah, I know. How many of you, when you go to someone's house, no matter what, bring something with you for the host? Yeah. Flowers. Something. Yeah. I know that some of my friends, I, I, you know, and I love that. The other part of a tradition that I realized when I moved to the South is that I didn't have in California is when people, when you go to someone's house for dinner, in the olden days before COVID, they would always give you something to take home with you. So that's, yeah, yeah, Sonia. That's the flip side. That's the flip side of you bring something, and if there's leftover food, you get to take something home with you. Interesting things that I don't know if you think about. And looking at rituals, uh, as I was looking at the rituals that I think of as rituals, of course, growing up in a particular um, religion, I had lots of things about candles and um, things like that. Um, so I don't know I've, where I got it, but there seems to be there are a lot of ritual for me around fire. Uh, for instance, a burning or a letting go, you know, write something on paper and maybe at the end of the year or any time and let it go. Burn it, let, give it to the ethers, give it to the sky, give it away. Uh, another thing you can do is with your wishes and your dreams, same kind of thing. Allow them to be given away. What other rituals do you have, maybe, that you share with others? Anything? Again, I always go back to, to I, 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 I really like lighting a candle. It centers me. It gives me something to, to focus on. How many of you like, like candles? Yeah. Lane saying, yes, bring something, a beverage, chocolates, or fresh berries. Yeah. For those people that don't eat sugar, fresh berries are a very welcome gift, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I was thinking about, as I got ready for this, about the, the gathering part and, and the whole process of it. And uh, I sort of went through my, my uh, getting ready for vision board New Year's. And I'm sure that you guys probably do this too, but thinking of what's entailed in a gathering, and that is, you know, there's deciding when to have it, who's going to be invited, where's it going to be, uh, sending out the invitations, the, in, the whole anticipation of, ooh, I'm going to have something, and people are going to come, and we're going to get together. That part that's been missing for us planning it, visualizing it, what can happen, supplies, food, and then the day. The day happens. The joy of greeting people and saying hi and so glad you're that you're here. It just makes me feel good even to, to think about it, about a gathering. And then, and then the things that go right, the things that go wrong. Uh, then there's, then there's all those things that, that give us joy even saying goodbye it was great i'm so glad you were here and the other part of it that i realized is in the last while as we hopefully can gather again the right people always are show up have you ever noticed that it goes along with um the fact that even though it used to be I'd put RSVP, anybody know what that means? <laughs> and that is, you know, let me know that you're coming or not. 
And I got used to thinking the right people will show up. What do you think about that? You think the right people are always going to show up? Well, it makes it a lot easier on me, i got to tell you. So thank you for being here um, to talk about gatherings, rituals, and really the role maybe of food or certain kinds of foods and activities as we grow our community together. Because that's what I want you to do every day. I want you to think, laser point, is my community here? Is there anything that I can do? Is there anything I can be? Is there anything I can attract to make my life in community something really that warms the hearts of myself and others? So I'm glad you're here next week, hoping that my technology works. And that is the role of some of the women in my life as role models. Let me say that again. That wasn't good. The women in my life who are role models, I will share with you. And I'd love to hear who your role models are as well. Thank you, Sonia, too, for your sharing. Everybody that was here, thank you for being here. Spread the word. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, there's going to be a poll coming out about the Facebook Lives and communication with all of you. So please respond. I think we're going to make some changes in 2022. Isn't that always the way? So thank you all for being here, hanging in with me. Sorry for the late start. And uh, remember, connection, information, and action. Have a great holiday. Whatever you may be doing, do it with gusto. <laughs>